enclosed was likewise a copy of the well-known letter addressed by Bonaparte to his Royal Highness, the Prince Regent. Your Royal Highness, I'm a victim to the factions which distress my country and to the enmity of the greatest powers of Europe. I have terminated my political career and I come like Themistocles to throw myself upon the hospitality of the British people. I put myself under the protection of their laws, which I claim from your Royal Highness as the most powerful, the most constant, and the most generous of my enemies, Napoleon. I'm reading the above. I told Monsieur Les Cases that I would receive Bonaparte on board. I had immediately forwarded General Gorgo to England by the Slaney, along with my dispatches to the Admiralty, but that he would not be allowed to land until permission was received from London or the sanction of the Admiral at the port he might at obtained. I assured him, however, that the copy of the letter with which he was charged would be forwarded without loss of time. I presented by the ministers to His Royal Highness, Count Scarsus, and asked for paper that he might communicate by letter to betray my acquiescence in the proposal he had brought for my receiving and conveying to England Bonaparte in his suite. When General Gorgo was about to write the letter to prevent any future misunderstanding, I said, Monsieur Les Casas, you will recollect that I'm not authorized to stipulate as to the reception of Bonaparte in England, but that he must consider himself entirely at the disposal of His Royal Highness, the Prince Regent. He answered, I'm perfectly aware of that, and have already acquainted the Emperor with what you said on the subject. It might perhaps have been better if this declaration had been given in an official written form and could I have foreseen the discussions which afterwards took place and which will appear in the sequel, I undoubtedly should have done so. But as I repeatedly made it in the presence of witnesses, it did not occur to me as being necessary. How could a stronger proof be adduced that no stipulations were agreed to respecting the reception of Bonaparte in England than the fact of their not being reduced to writing? which certainly would have been the case had any favorable terms been demanded on the part of Mr. Les Cases and agreed to by me. The French boat was soon after dispatched with the letter to Bertrand in charge of a French naval officer who had attended Les Cases on board. And as soon as I had finished the following dispatch to the Secretary of the Admiralty, I sent Captain Sartorius of the Slaney to England accompanied by General Gorgo. Extract of a letter from Captain May. His Majesty's ship, Elrefin, addressed the Secretary of the Admiralty, dated in Basque Roads, 14th July, 1815. For the information of the Lords Commissioners of the Admiralty, I have to acquaint you that the countless causes and General Lalaman, this day came on board His Majesty's ship under my command with a proposal from Count Bertrand for me to receive on board Napoleon Bonaparte for the purpose of throwing himself in the generosity of the Prince Regent. Conceiving myself authorized by the Lordship's secret order, I have acceded to the proposal, and he is to embark on board this ship tomorrow morning. That no misunderstanding might arise, I have explicitly and clearly explained to countless causes that I have no authority, whatever, for granting terms of any sort, but that all I can do is carry him and his suite to England to be received in such manner as His Royal Highness may deem expedient. At Napoleon Bonaparte's request, and that their lordships may be in possession of the transaction at as early a period as possible, I dispatched the Slaney with General Gorgo, his aide-de-camp, directing Captain Sartorius to put into the nearest port and forward this letter by his first lieutenant and show compliance with their lordships' orders. Proceed to Torbay to await such directions as the Admiralty may think proper to give. Enclosed, I transmit a copy of the letter with which General Gargo was charged to His Royal Highness the Prince Regent, and request that you will grant their lordships that the general informs me he is entrusted with further particulars, which he is anxious to communicate to His Royal Highness. When these gentlemen had left the ship, as well as the south barge, I said to Monsieur Les Cases, I propose dividing the after cabin in two, that the ladies may have the use of one part of it, if you will allow me to give an opinion, said he, the emperor will be better pleased to have the whole of the after cabin to himself, as he is fond of walking about, and will by that means be able to take my exercise. I answered, as it is my wish to treat him with every possible consideration while he is on board the ship I command, I shall make any arrangement you think will be most agreeable to him. 
This is the only conversation that ever passed in the subject of the cabin. And I am the more particular in stating it as what a party has been described in some of the public journals as having taken possession of it in a most brutal way, saying, tout or rien pour moi, all or nothing for me. I hear, therefore, once for all, begged to state most distinctly that from the time of his coming on board my ship to the period of his quitting her, his conduct was invariably that of a gentleman. And in no one instance do I recollect him to have made use of a rude expression or to have been guilty of any kind of ill-breeding.